The highway code is published by the Department for Transport and is licensed under the Open Government License version 3.0. For more information, click on the link in the description below. Rules for drivers and motorcyclists, rules 89 to 102. Rules for drivers and motorcyclists including vehicle condition, fitness to drive, alcohol and drugs, what to do before setting off, vehicle towing and loading, and seat belts and child restraints. Vehicle condition, rule 89. You must ensure your vehicle and trailer comply with the full requirements of the road vehicles construction and use regulations and road vehicles lighting regulations. See the road user and the law. Fitness to drive rules 90 to 94. Rule 90. Make sure that you are fit to drive. You must report to the driver and vehicle licensing agency DVLA any health condition likely to affect your driving. Rule 91. Driving when you are tired greatly increases your risk of collision. To minimize this risk, make sure you are fit to drive. Do not begin a journey if you are tired. Get sufficient sleep before embarking on a long journey. Avoid undertaking long journeys between midnight and 6 a.m. when natural alertness is at a minimum. Plan your journey to take sufficient breaks. A minimum break of at least 15 minutes after every two hours of driving is recommended. If you feel sleepy, stop in a safe place. Do not stop in an emergency area or on a hard shoulder of a motorway. See rule 262 for guidance on places to take a break when traveling on motorways. Rule 92, vision. You must be able to read a vehicle number plate in good daylight from a distance of 20 meters or 20.5 meters where the old style number plate is used. If you need to wear glasses or contact lenses to do this, you must wear them at all times while driving. The police have the power to require a driver to undertake an eyesight test. Rule 93. Slow down and if necessary stop if you are dazzled by bright sunlight. At night or in poor visibility, do not use tinted glasses, lenses or visors if they restrict your vision. Alcohol and drugs, rules 95 to 96. Rule 95, do not drink and drive as it will seriously affect your judgment and abilities. In England and Wales, you must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 35 micrograms per 100 milliliters of breath or a blood alcohol level of more than 80 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. In Scotland, the legal limits are lower. You must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 22 micrograms per 100 milliliters of breath, or a blood alcohol level of more than 50 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. Alcohol will give a false sense of confidence. It will reduce coordination and slow down reactions. It can affect judgment of speed, distance and risk and can reduce your driving ability even if you're below the legal limit. Alcohol will take time to leave your body. You may be unfit to drive in the evening after drinking at lunchtime or in the morning after drinking the previous evening. The best solution is not to drink at all when planning to drive because any amount of alcohol affects your ability to drive safely. If you are going to drink, arrange another means of transport. Rule 96. You must not drive under the influence of drugs or medicine. For medicines, check with your doctor or pharmacist and do not drive if you are advised that you may be impaired. You must not drive if you have illegal drugs or certain medicines in your blood above specified limits. It is highly dangerous, so never take illegal drugs if you intend to drive. The effects are unpredictable, 
but can be even more severe than alcohol and result in fatal or serious road crashes. Illegal drugs have been specified at very low levels, so even small amounts of use could be above the specified limits. The limits for certain medicines have been specified at higher levels, above the levels generally found in the blood of patients who have taken normal therapeutic doses. If you are found to have a concentration of a drug above its specified limit in your blood because you have been prescribed or legitimately supplied a particularly high dose of medicine, then you can raise a statutory medical defence provided your driving was not impaired by the medicine you are taking. Before setting off, Rule 97. Before setting off, you must ensure that you have a valid licence and insurance to drive the vehicle you intend to use. You must ensure your vehicle is legal and roadworthy. See the sections on motor vehicle documentation and learner driver requirements and vehicle maintenance, safety and security for important vehicle maintenance and safety checks. You should ensure that you have planned your route and allowed sufficient time for brakes and possible delays. You should ensure you have sufficient fuel or electrical charge for your journey, especially if it includes motorway driving. You should ensure you know where all the controls are and how to use them. Ensure that clothing and footwear do not prevent you using the controls in the correct manner. Ensure your mirrors and seat are adjusted correctly to ensure comfort, full control and maximum vision. Ensure head restraints are properly adjusted to reduce the risk of neck and spine injuries in the event of a collision. It is recommended for emergency use that you have a mobile telephone containing emergency contacts, for example, breakdown assistance, and you should carry high visibility clothing. Vehicle towing and loading, rule 98. Before towing, as a driver, you must not tow more than your license permits. If you passed your car driving test on or after the 1st of January 1997, you are restricted on the weight of trailers you can tow. You must ensure that both your vehicle and your trailer are in a roadworthy condition. This includes checking that all tyres are legal, the trailer braking system is in full working order and all trailer lights are working correctly. You must not overload your vehicle or trailer. You should not tow a weight greater than that recommended by the manufacturer of your vehicle. You should distribute the weight in your caravan or trailer evenly with heavy items over the axle and ensure a downward load on the tow ball. The manufacturer's recommended weight and tow ball load should not be exceeded. This should minimise the possibility of swerving or snaking and loss of control. You must secure your load and it must not stick out dangerously. Make sure any heavy or sharp objects and any animals are secured safely. If there is a collision, they might hit someone inside the vehicle and cause serious injury. If your vehicle is narrower than your trailer or load, or your trailer or load obstructs your rearward view, then towing mirrors must be used. Your trailer must be fitted with a secondary coupling device, such as a safety chain. Carrying a load or pulling a trailer may require you to adjust your headlights. During towing, as a driver, you should be aware that reduced speed limits apply. See rule 124. You should be aware that your stopping distance may increase significantly when towing. See rule 126. You must not drive in the right-hand lane on motorways with three or more lanes. See rule 265. If the trailer starts to swerve or snake, or you lose control, ease off the accelerator and reduce speed gently to regain control. Do not brake harshly. Breakdowns. 
in the event of a breakdown, be aware that towing a vehicle on a tow rope is potentially dangerous. You should consider using a solid tow bar or professional recovery. Be aware it may take longer to build up speed when rejoining a carriageway. See also rule 278. Seat belts and child restraints, rules 99 to 102. Rule 99. You must wear a seat belt in cars, vans or other goods vehicles if one is fitted. Adults and children aged 14 years and over must use a seat belt or child restraint where fitted when seated in minibuses, buses and coaches. Exemptions are allowed for the holders of medical exemption certificates and those making deliveries or collections in goods vehicles when travelling less than 50 metres. Seatbelt requirements are summarised in the table on screen. These are the main legal requirements for wearing seatbelts in cars, vans and other goods vehicles. The driver in the front seat must wear a seatbelt. Of course, you would not have a driver in the rear seat. The driver is responsible for wearing their seatbelt. Children under three years of age. In the front seat, a correct child restraint must be used. In the rear seat, a correct child restraint must be used. But if one is not available in a taxi, they may travel unrestrained. The driver is the responsible person. Children from their third birthday up to when they reach 1.35 metres in height or their 12th birthday, whichever comes first. In the front seat, a correct child restraint must be used. In the rear seat, a correct child restraint must be used where seat belts are fitted. They must use an adult belt if a correct child restraint is not available in a licensed taxi or private hire vehicle, or for reasons of unexpected necessity over a short distance, or if two occupied restraints prevent fitment of a third. So just to explain that a little more, if you are in your own car, then a child of that age in the rear seat must use a correct child restraint. If you don't have one, you cannot carry that passenger in the back of your car. If you are in a taxi or a licensed private hire vehicle, it is permitted to use an adult seatbelt if a correct child restraint is not available. Or if there is an unexpected necessity so an emergency, for example, you need to get your child to hospital, then it is permitted to carry your child in the rear seat wearing an adult seat belt. Finally, if you need to get three children in the back of a car and there is only room for two child seats, then it is permitted for the third child to wear an adult seat belt. It is the driver who is responsible for making that decision and ensuring that they comply with the legislation. Children over 1.35 metres or over 12 years old but under 14, in the front seat, they must wear the adult seat belt. In the rear seat, an adult seat belt must be worn if available. It is the driver who is responsible for making that decision. And finally, adult passengers and that includes children over 14 who are considered adults for the purposes of this seatbelt legislation. In the front seat, a seatbelt must be worn if available. And in the rear seat, a seatbelt must be worn if available. It is the passenger themselves who is responsible for making that decision once they reach the age of 14. Rule 100. The driver must ensure that all children under 14 years of age in cars, vans and other goods vehicles wear seat belts or sit in an approved child restraint where required. If a child is under 1.35 metres tall, a baby seat, child seat, 
booster seat or booster cushion must be used that's suitable for the child's weight and is fitted to the manufacturer's instructions. Rule 101. A rear-facing baby seat must not be fitted into a seat protected by an active front airbag, as in a crash it can cause serious injury or death to the child. Rule 102. Children in cars, vans and other goods vehicles. Drivers who are carrying children in cars, vans and other goods vehicles should also ensure the following. Children should get into the vehicle through the door nearest the curb. Child restraints are properly fitted to the manufacturer's instructions. Children do not sit behind the rear seats in an estate car or hatchback unless a special child seat has been fitted. The child safety door locks, where fitted, are used when children are in the vehicle. And children are kept under control.